so I was hanging out at a bar that I was a bartender at one night in Hollywood. Oh. It was a, it was a quiet night. There weren't a lot of people there. And, um, the owner introduces me to Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses and Matt Sorum. Matt's the drummer and Duff's the bass player. And so Duff and I started talking a lot and we really hit it off and um, he didn't want to leave, but Matt wanted to leave. So Duff asked me if I'd drive him home. And I said, yeah, sure. I'll drive you home. Um, the funny thing about that is he was such a mess. He was drunk and he was just a disheveled mess. Um, but he was so sweet. So, you know, I'm like, all right. And he's in Guns N' Roses. I mean, who's not going to be fascinated by wanting to know the people in Guns N' Roses? And they were currently working on their Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 album. So they were at mm. their peak. So I was really interested in talking to him. Um, and I drove him home and he asked for my number. So, of course, I gave him my number. And we, you know, he started calling me. Well, when I went to the John Stamos party, he was there oh, with a funny. girl. Okay. <laughs> um, and he saw me. And then he started, that's when he really started pursuing me more, uh -huh. started calling me. And it was no big romance. I mean, he was, the sad thing is, and I'm sure he would, he may not even remember because he was always drunk. Like anytime I was with him, well, he, I think he was just drunk 24 seven during that time mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know he's cleaned himself up and he's doing, you know, fabulous things with his life. So I don't mean to criticize him, but um, he was, uh, pretty much a mess at the time, but I did have a lot of fun with him. We went to all kinds of parties and um, it gave me a taste of though, being that close to celebrity, it's kind of isolating and sad because people were just always so at him and after mm. him, but it was, it's, it's also uh, so funny how, what a small world Hollywood is. Cause here's, sure. I had already met Duff and he had been calling me. And then I go to this party at John Stamos house and there's Duff. And then he starts pursuing me and it's just, so funny how what a small community and world um <clears throat> that hollywood is you know i like the time i spent with duff he re he really opened up to me a lot about i remember his mother had parkinson's disease and he read a card to me that she had sent him and he, you know he was looking for a friend you know someone to chat talk to who was normal who didn't want anything from him um you know and there uh, <laughs> he um I remember, you know, his bedroom was like a, it was a suite. Yeah. You know, the, the bed was uh, elevated on this uh, platform. And then mm -hmm. the, there was a settee in front of the little love seat in front of the a fireplace. And mm -hmm. I remember he sat me down on the little love seat and he sang a song to me from the new album before anybody had heard it. And mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was, but um, you know, he was very, uh, nor, you know, it was just like, he was very romantic. I remember another night he sang patience to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, he was just, you know, they're just people. And I think, you know, understanding that, you know, they, That's they, true. they are put in a position. If anything, I always empathized with famous people.